see what we got for oil in it. Well, it looks like loader tractor oil, but <laughs> smells like old oil. A little closer look here. These valve springs are rusty. Right there is our uh, stuck valve. I believe that's antifreeze. Not a really good sign. Yeah, that's antifreeze. Got an empty trailer with a winch on it. All hooked up and ready to go. Can only mean one thing. We're off to get some junk.
Well, here it is. Uh, what I believe to be a 1956 Alice Chalmers WD-45. As well as the original plow that came with it. Um, so the story with this is, I have a friend who sent me a text the other night, gave me a phone call and said, Hey, I'm bidding on some stuff on this online auction and they've got a tractor. He says, I don't need it, but you probably do. And, uh, I don't know how to say no to cheap stuff, so ended up being for $500, I brought this load of rusty gold home. I called the auctioneer and they weren't able to really tell me anything about it ahead of time other than it ran when parked 10 years ago. Anybody curious? Looks like the serial number is 215103. But there was two pictures online, that was about it, so. Taking a look at it, it, it doesn't look like too bad of a tractor. Uh, we got one decent tire and the fronts kind of hold air. One's junk on the back. Got some rust around the valve stems. Usually these have the drawbar broken right here, so it hasn't had too tough a life that way. Looks like the PTO shaft has maybe seen some better days. This rim needs some some rust repair, but overall, you know, that's that's not too bad. I can I can fix that up. Have to buy a set of tires for it probably. Looks like it's got the original engine in it. These are pretty neat tractors. They're awful powerful for their size. They would be what people would consider scrappy, essentially. You know, you could pull a 314 plow in about any ground, and uh, these tractors only weigh about 4,500 pounds or so. But I, I think I got some video of the guy talking, but he was saying that they bought this back in the 70s, his dad did, and. They just kind of used it around their cattle farm, so I don't think it's a real high hour tractor. You know, usually you'll see these brakes being real sloppy. Grind, they'll grind into the fender because they're sloppy, and then the, the checking here will be wore off. Sometimes these are worn pretty good. Heck, this one's barely worn at all. Has good snap in what you call a hand clutch so these tractors in order to get what they call live hydraulics and live power takeoff you had a foot clutch that would stop power to everything but once you had it in gear and you were going stop go to like raise the loader or something you can push that hand clutch out and that kills power right here so everything driven in front of that area which the hydraulic pump and the power takeoff are in front of that they stay in motion so forward motion stops but all the auxiliary power would keep going got the original hand crank with it which is pretty neat original toolbox usually these are rotted out it's not rotted out and some creases in the fenders but not too bad looks like it went through JL Wanamaker I don't know if that would have been original or not but uh autoville ohio back before you had uh, all the digits in your phone number there was no area code this is probably the original steering wheel the original wood spinner on it you know the more i look at it this seems like a darn nice tractor but oh wow yeah the gear shifts pretty tight this is your pto engagement pull that out engages it and then this is uh, what would release your snap coupler implements so there's this bell up in here and these latches so this eye 
goes in the bell and these go in your latches and uh, theoretically you can hitch and unhitch these implements without ever getting off the tractor which is pretty neat and uh, kind of revolutionary for the time because com competition for these tractors would have been like a farm all M uh, maybe even a super M uh, what else would you have probably John Deere 60s would be similar to this and uh, not that those weren't good machines everything's got its pros and cons but you know one of these little tractors could really walk walk the dog on them for for speed and, and plowing in a lot of places and then that that hydraulic lift was was pretty nice you didn't have to pull behind anything and they had the traction booster which is draft control in a modern machine and that would allow you to get by with this lightweight tractor and and do a lot more work put the horsepower to the ground but well yeah overall seems like a pretty good tractor i i think it already looks like a decent buy at five hundred dollars um he said it turned over so i'll we'll check that out but uh i'm gonna say i'm gonna back it in the shop here and turn some heat on and uh, see if we can get this thing running Gonna start out taking a look at a few things here. Just your typical stuff. See if there's clean fuel tank or not. Uh, looks like it still has fuel in it. I. It don't smell bad though. I think they tried to. I think they put some in it. Tried to get it to run. He mentioned, he said, kind of like they tried to get it running. Like they cranked it over or something, or, or maybe it wouldn't crank over. There's the batteries from, looks like October of 2010. Yeah, maybe we'll flush that carburetor out. Looks like it might be the original engine it, it is a wd-45 engine i was a little curious because somebody has cut this hood out for a later style like uh oh this style of muffler was probably originally used on like a series 3 d17 maybe seen these on like a 170 or something similar engine uh but a little quieter muffler. But when they did it, man, they did a nice job. They didn't really, I mean, technically they hacked the hood up, but there's the original divot from the circle. But I mean, that's nice. That might sound good, you know, if it wasn't rotted out. These are the original decals underneath. It's got some original paint. That's the original decal on the front, I believe. Got some fuel in it. Looks like the original temperature gauge looks real nice. I'm not seeing any coolant there. We look pretty bone dry. There's some moisture. But that that adds up because you can see maybe. You can see that moisture, that kind of green color right there. I bet it's seeping along the bottom. But the rest of that radiator looks pretty good. So, might have to do some patching, but that should be all right. 
somebody has bent this front axle pivot in and uh, well they probably didn't bend it in they actually bent it out and imagine that front end fell off at one point in time because this should be flipped 180 and this little block should be on the back so I'll bet you they pulled that forward was pulling it out of the mud or something and uh, and they messed that up yeah so I can bend that straight we'll put that back to the way it should be yeah I'm sure they probably yanked on that thing and bent that out that front end probably fell well it didn't fall out from under it but I'm sure it got bent up I thought this was kind of neat. They got beauty rings on them. I've never seen that on anything before. I'm sure they're not factory. They're off a car of some kind, but kind of neat. Looks like the oil pan's in good shape. Usually the, the uh, drain plugs are all rounded off. This one's in good shape. I don't see signs of it leaking all over the place. Somebody's been in the engine. There's some silicone up there. Got some play. Tighten that up. But all, that's all in the actual taper. So you probably tighten that nut up. Get that play out of it. Tape's got any hydraulic oil. Oh, it's got some. That's plenty for me not to worry about it. Looks like we've had some, some grounding issues here. Here's probably the original ground cable and whatever they're using now. Still has a traction booster gauge. Looks like a replacement though. That's an aftermarket gauge there, but good that it's got the lines and everything on it. Uh, they've got the remote hydraulic line unhooked. Probably because of the loader. You know, if I give you any idea of the actual hours, is this tire right here, I will, I would pretty much guarantee you that that is the original rear tire on this thing. We've got a, it's a good year. No, I might be wrong, because it's, it's a 14.9 instead of the old style uh 1328 so this i i think this sure looks like it could be an original tire and if it was that's how much wear it's got on it so i know you look at the old promotional videos and this is the type of tire they had on them so if that's original that would give you a pretty good guesstimate of how many at least road miles you know you could pull a plow a long time without wearing a tire out but uh that would tell you. Got a beauty ring on this side too. That's tight. That front end's pretty tight, you know, aside from that front pivot. And that's probably worn funny because they got it bent. And we'll repair that. A little cracking down in the radiator shell. That's real common. Let's see what we got for oil in it. Well, it looks like loader tractor oil, but right up there on the top. <laughs> smells like old oil. Doesn't really smell like gas like the engines wore out. This got bent somehow. And looks like somebody wrapped some chains over the hood or something right there. But man, the sheet metal other than that, I mean, it's pretty darn, it is pretty darn straight. There's another one of them Wanamaker sales. I'm sure that's where he bought it. I don't know if that's where it would have been sold originally or not. That decal looks newer than or uh, yeah, newer than the 50s. That would be their like 70s decal if I remember right. Here's your loader tag. These were built by Freeman. Uh, 
Freeman loaders are pretty common, but they built them for Alice. This one ain't in too bad a shape. Some of the pins are butchered up. This has been welded back together, but it's got the lower brace. You know, she's she's done some work in her day. Got a few wallered out spots. This is uh, not the original handle. Somebody fabric cobbled that together. And you know, some people are going to ask about this tractor uh, when they see it in the background here. It it will run soon. Uh, I've been super busy the last six months or so remodeling a house, so I haven't had any time to work on this. But I just recently started back in on it, and uh, everything's looking pretty good. So it should be a runner here, hopefully in the next few weeks. Use this hand crank to reach in here and see if I can turn it over. The fellow said it was free. And uh, I believe him, but this will at least tell me what it's got for compression. Well, she, she's a little tight. It's not, it ain't, it's not stuck, but it's, it's kind of tight. It ain't got much compression. Uh, the reins are probably seized up in it, so let's, uh, let's dump a little oil down those cylinders. The plug looks healthy off the number three cylinder. Number four doesn't look too bad. Might have a little moisture in that one, but uh, looks healthy otherwise. I've worked on quite a few of these Alice Chalmers 201 and 226 cubic inch four cylinders and pretty nice to work on. They're pretty simple. Uh, that one looks pretty good too. Not too bad. Same deal. Looks like I had a touch of moisture in it. Somebody put champions in there. I'm not a big champion guy. Usually put auto lights in all these tractors. They like to run pretty good on those. Number one looks pretty good too. Got this concoction to put in here. They, it's a little bit of everything. Little transmission fluid, little acetone, little PV blaster. Uh, there's marble mystery oil in there. One of those has to uh, loosen her up. Go ahead and turn the engine over now and get that worked into the cylinders. Oh, that's helping. Yeah, it probably wouldn't have been a great idea to start that engine without doing this. Give them a few more pumps and we'll let them sit while we check out the electrical and the fuel system. Sometimes those crusty old clamps will surprise you. Sure, you get your pry bar chisel combination out. You can use these brushes to clean up terminals or you can use a similar thing in a drill like a plumbing 
plumbing brush or something. But something to keep in mind, because I've ran into it before, is that some of these, and I think it's, it's the acid that causes it from a battery, but you'll actually get a buildup inside these that a, that a brush won't take out. And you can, you can tell that when you're scraping them out. If you can get a knife in there and just scrape the lead out of that clamp, you're probably okay. But that other stuff, man, it'll grow in there and it'll be so hard you can barely scrape it out with a knife. And when that gets in there, it, it does not seem to allow current to transfer through. So that's always something to check because you can you can just clean and clean and clean with one of these but it won't take that layer out. So if you ever find yourself cleaning and cleaning and you're still not getting good contact, it seems like you got a poor ground, check that. Make sure you don't have a hard build up inside those clamps. But that one, that one's shining up just fine. Pick a ground clamp here to use. This one kind of has it. It's peeling out okay, but you can probably hear the grittiness in here. Lead doesn't make that noise. That is build up, that corrosive build up in there. Now, if you get that cut out, you'd be just fine. You can use these terminals over. It's not perfect, but better than it was. See if we have any life here. So normally this would be a key switch. And this would be a light switch, but it looks like we got something else over here. Maybe for this additional hazard light they've got on there. It's kind of neat. I've not seen one like that before. I'm sure it's off of something, maybe an old dealership. Add-on, looks like Agristat brand is the lenses at least. They're, they're plastic lenses, so probably not that old. But this would have been your original, just this bullet tail light. And some of them had a light down here. I don't remember if all of them would have had a rear work light or not. Not sure that would have been factory. Yeah, nothing on the the lights. Well, yeah, no lights. Don't seem like we got really power anywhere there. But let's see, we got power to our starter. Oh yeah. Cool. Well, that's what we need there. So I guess uh, up next, let's see if we can get some uh, spark out of this thing. All right, so I'm gonna do some checking here and see if I've got voltage to my coil. Should have around six volts here. Showing a volt and a half. Uh, let, me, let me flip the switches around and see if that changes at all. Uh, none of the switches 
switches are making a difference. Let's check back out our battery cable here to the starter. Yep, just over six volts. That's good. So I'm thinking we've got a, a fuse that's bad. These generally have a fuse right in here. Okay. Let's see, that's not hooked up. Uh, this little switch isn't hooked to anything. That switch is hooked to nothing. So we need to see. It looks like the only switch they have in operation is this replacement that they've got on uh, the what would have been the original ignition switch. So let me check that. All right. Got our ground set up. Check it on our positive battery terminal. Part six. One of these sides should show six volts. There's six volts. And there's your one and a half. Okay. Well, I got some contact cleaner. Let me try to get that switch working. Usually, if you can get some electrical cleaner down in along the stem, uh, you can get these to come back to life. But that sure feels better now. Let's see if that's working. So that's our six volts in. And it's still only one and a half out. Well, I don't have a switch handy, but I've got a workaround for that. Just to see if we can get this thing running, we'll put a jumper on it. Now I'll put this jumper wire right there to the coil. And the other end is going to run up to our positive, well, technically negative battery cable because these are positive ground tractors. Now I should have six volts to my coil. There we go. Now that I know we've got voltage to our coil, I can try a spark test to verify whether or not we have actual ignition spark. And that's a good hot spark. I don't know if you could see that or not. Let me crank it one more time. Well, seeing that, I'm gonna go ahead you know, I'm sure this distributor needs uh, taken apart, checked out and everything clean, but just for the initial, will this thing run, is it worth the effort type of check over, uh, I'm gonna go ahead and put those plugs back in and put the wires back on and then we're gonna move on to the fuel system.
I got a better look inside this tank and I mean it's clean there's like a small portion in the very middle of the bottom that it looks like it might have had I don't know maybe a little water settle out or something there's a small amount of rust in there but the rest of it's like brand new looking you can see the strainer and everything so but it's 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 like half full of fuel and it smells like fresh fuel so I'm thinking and by what uh, the Sun said at the uh, pickup of this thing I believe they tried to get it running for the auction they just didn't try uh, very didn't go very far with it you know put some fuel in it and uh, it didn't start essentially so what I'm gonna do is I'm going to drain it out through the carburetor and on, if, as long as that flows clean I'm gonna close it back up and uh, we may try to fire this thing up doesn't look like anybody's been in here for a while and uh, actually you know what I see something here this here you may not be able to see it the GoPro doesn't focus good at close-up objects but this is shiny so somebody's ran this choke so I wonder they might have even tried to jump the thing and it, and it didn't start um, that could very well be they might have had a jump pack on it and had it turning over at least now that's that had some varnish in it without a doubt that's got a little smell to it got a little clog in there because that should be flowing way better than that I'm guessing it's probably because of this sediment bowl looks pretty dirty I've got some gasket material if I need to make a new gasket so I'm gonna go ahead and clean this while we're at it and you can see the separation of clean new fuel and old fuel and water mixed together in that and some sludge in the bottom see how well this flows right here yeah there's our clog is uh is there up in that fuel neck a lot of times what will happen is right here where this sediment bowl goes up there's kind of a riser that goes up into that tank and all the sediment will end up plugging up in that riser and you pretty much just got to take this out and clean everything up uh, the problem here is this tank is now half full so I'm going to see if I can blow back through this line and unclog that This is not the original fuel line to this tractor. They were routed better and tucked in, but they rarely have the originals on them when they're this old. Yeah, it's moving so slow, it's not even coming down through. There you go, that's, that's what you wanna see. That's what the flow should look like, not that small trickle we had earlier. It smells good. They definitely had to put some uh, fresh fuel in this thing to try to get it going. See what kind of flow we're getting out of this thing now coming through the carburetor. Yeah, that, that, that's more like it. That's what we want to see. That's enough to feed this thing under full load, not, not what was coming out before. Turn the fuel back on. Check for leaks, make sure our needle's gonna seal up. Looks 
like we're good. I believe we are this close to hearing this thing run. We've got fuel, we've got spark. Now oh, there's air in the room, so that's there. Uh, it seems like we've got some compression now. Uh, so I'm gonna hook that jumper wire up. It's gonna give us spark again. I'm gonna crank this thing up and you're probably gonna see all kinds of mouse nests or whatever blow out of that exhaust. So let's give it a try. All right, let's see what we've got here. Got a neutral, gonna give it a little throttle, some choke. She should fire up. Well, we've got everything we should need. Should have spark. Everything's hooked up. Might have to give it just a sniff of ether. Well, that did not fire rate right up. So let me double check that we have spark and we may want to give it just a whiff of ether it uh, might be down on compression on a couple cylinders it kind of sounds like and uh, that's not helping anything and we got spark i'm thinking we're being a little too reliant on that old fuel uh, even if it's fresh uh, mixing with some of that old fuel sometimes doesn't work great all right, I pulled the air cleaner boot off and uh, she's flooding out a little bit, which I think has a lot to do with uh, the mixture of old and new fuel that this may or may not have in it. So I'm gonna spray a little starting fluid and I'm hoping that'll get it to crack off. I'll let this thing set a minute and I've got a charger on the battery hopefully give us a little more juice uh, but I'm willing to try it again and see if we can get this thing going check compression real quick see see what we're working with well we've got compression on of some kind on one two and three number four we got a, we got a dead cylinder there since I've got my borescope handy, I'm just gonna go ahead and uh, check in these cylinders. What am I looking at here? I should really invest in a better borescope. Oh, uh, looks like we got some average looking cylinders. Our valves, there's our one valve. That's probably why we've got no compression. Let me... Where are we at? So that's our valve hanging down. Let me crank it. That should move. See, that's that's not moving. 
Let me work on that real quick. Not a huge fan of that. A uh, good chance if you got it running, that would pop free, but I'm gonna pull the hood off and the valve cover and see what's hanging that thing up. I'm sure it's just stuck. A couple wraps from the top will have it loose, but let's do it kind of the right way instead of prying around through the plug hole. This one still has most of the original screws in the hood, which don't make it particularly easy to take off. One nice thing about these WDs and WD45s and RCs and WCs, they all got this nice platform, except for the diesel, but uh, you pile all your tools there, so the last minute when you're done working, you gotta clear that thing off. Pretty typical looking under here. Looks clean in there. Been a little while since somebody's been in here. Yeah, there's some moisture around the water pump pulley. That may uh, be part of our low coolant issue. You know, this looks like a pretty well cared for tractor, to be honest with you. You know, it's been somewhat neglected in the past few years, but you know, you'll see these things and the valve covers all caved in from people over tightening. This, you know, this will be worn through. You'll have broken off bolts. It's, it's, it's overall, it's pretty good shape. Sometimes you can get a little indication from the oil fills. Looks pretty clean down in there. Sometimes you see a bunch of sludge built up from vapor over the years. Uh, get this valve cover off, that'll kind of tell you a story too. Whether or not they ever used detergent oil in it or... This one may look pretty rough being it was a loader tractor and probably did a bunch of uh, here and there work and not a lot of field work. All right, this could be rough. Let's see what we've what we've got in here. It's some moisture, which was expected. Uh, I've definitely seen a lot worse, but you never want to see that much condensation. Underside of the valve cover is not not too bad at all. Uh, just a little buildup in there, but uh, I'll wipe that out. This is actually what what looks like sludge is actually it, it's water, water buildup. You can see it run down the inside of that. It's just got like coagulated oil over it, um, but it's not rusted out. I've pulled these apart where the whole inside of this is is pitted up. And uh, this whole valve train, everything is uh, covered in rust. This one's got some though, with, without a doubt has some rust. A little closer look here. These valve springs are rusty. Right there is our uh, stuck valve. That one's free. Uh, this is the one that's stuck down. We may get a surprise. Uh, when we start this engine, uh, I might want to crack the drain plug because this That frost plug looks like it's pushed out a Bit maybe it maybe it's not And the other one's similar, but I, I might crack that plug before we Before we fire it up It's kind of one of those things that you You go well, maybe I should pull this apart and then you get in a little bit of a hurry and you say ah, You don't need to do that. Just see if it runs and and you kind of pull it apart like, well, this thing could, could use a little bit of lubrication in it. Here's something interesting that, uh, I don't know, 
it's probably been going on a while. I doubt it just happened, but uh, that oil feed line is broke off. So I have put that on the list of uh, making a new one. But that could have been uh, been broke off for quite a while. That's what uh, that's what feeds your feeds your rocker arms. See if I can get this one tap free. Usually some light taps on it. And yep, there we go. There she goes. Now it's free. And uh, that was the only stuck one, I believe. Well, we got oil pumping. Real thin oil pumping. Hmm. Yeah, I think I want to drain this crankcase out, maybe. At least the bottom. That almost seemed that was like pumping water. You know, I'm not sure if this is a replacement oil pan. But I don't think I've ever owned one of these where uh, they had this divot back here. So I wonder if that's a replacement. But I've been seeing some things. I'm kind of curious if it's got some water, some moisture in it. And it's, we've been cranking it over so it might be stirred up, but generally if something's been sitting long enough, all the water will settle to the bottom. I believe that's antifreeze. It's, cer it's certainly not oil. It's way... Too thin to be oil. Not a really good sign. Yeah, that's antifreeze. There we go. So to catch you up a slight bit here, I did a little work without filming it. All that antifreeze coming out of the oil just had me a couple things. Feeling bad that I didn't check it to start with. Uh, Should have checked that out before I uh, started cranking on it. Um, but then it's kind of, all right, well, where'd the antifreeze come from? Uh, it definitely wasn't water. It was It was antifreeze, so uh basically these have uh wet sleeves so the o-rings on the bottom of the sleeves could be the problem they could be leaking there you could have your head gasket leaking um i didn't really think that was the issue or there's a very common place for them to leak and that is these freeze plugs expansion plugs soft plugs whatever you want to call them in the head here top of the head and that is our issue so let me show you here so hopefully you can see that uh, I'm going to very gently add some air to the cooling system with hopes not to make a mess here you can see that coming out Kind of right in that shadow. There you go. You can see, you can see that pinhole there, right at the top of the screen, the top of that soft plug. That right at the tip of my knife, that little speck, that's a hole that is rusted through that soft plug. That's where all the coolant came from. So that leaves us to 
replace those. Uh, if you're gonna do one, you might as well do two. So I'll do two, do both of them. Have to pick those up. Um, I've already flushed this crankcase out, uh, flushed over the heads and stuff. Uh, there's still this, you know, moisture rust problem going on in here. But um, I'm gonna go ahead and pick up some of the soft plugs, and we're gonna put some fresh oil in here before we go any farther. But I am pretty thankful that uh, it didn't start and I looked into this a little farther because I did wouldn't be ideal to start running it and have all that antifreeze wipe the bearings out it wouldn't be any good at all because I don't think it's been run like that I think that's happened since uh, it's been sitting because there was there's no metal bearing material anything came out of the crankcase so I think we're we're good to go this engine's fine but just got to replace those soft plugs. I'm back here the next day and I've got, I believe, the correct welch plugs to go in uh, this head that's leaking now. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, get the coolant drained down a bit. And it, it looks like probably the best bet is to uh, pull this rocker assembly loose. Uh, that way I can get a good... A uh, straight shot to drive the new ones in. And now that's a good opportunity uh, to clean, clean all that rust up. Got the coolant all drained down, so I'm going to see about pulling these plugs now. I got going as a pair of vice grips with this kind of T-handle welded on it. I'm just gonna pop that with a hammer and I think it should pop plug right out. There's the back one. Now this one wasn't leaking yet, but uh, you know, probably not far behind the other one. Plenty crusty on the bottom side there. And here's the other one. And this one, this one was our leaker. You can see the daylight coming through it. I mean, that that's a huge crater, I don't know. Yeah, maybe you can see the crater on the right side of it there. This big old rust flake came out, uh, but that was our problem, without a doubt. Now the rest of the, the head in there, aside from what we're looking at, at the top doesn't look too bad, so, uh, I'm going to vacuum that out and uh, clean all the crust up and we'll drive our new ones in. So able to get the head cleaned up pretty good. The bores where the welch plugs go look pretty decent. Uh, I think they should seal up. Here's my new plugs. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and put a little uh, Indian head shellac on them. It's been around a while, but thicker's all right with what I'm doing here. Yeah, 
Well, they're in there. I'll fill it up. See if they leak, I guess. I'm going to add a little air pressure to the cooling system and see if I can get it to leak. Well, I put some, some solid pressure on that. It didn't, didn't blow out, so. I'm okay with running that for now. So I got everything cleaned back up, got the new Welch plugs in, did a uh, quick little pressure test. They didn't blow out. I don't know, I'm not real thrilled with how tight they went in. I think they should have went in a little tighter, but with that shellac on there, maybe it was giving me a false sense of, uh, you know, really how much friction is holding them in there. But uh, I'm gonna go ahead and uh, start sticking this thing back together. I was able to get the uh, rocker shaft and all the rockers cleaned up pretty nice. Uh, there's a little bit of pitting on them but nothing nothing too bad. Oh no! The rocker shaft's upside down. Dang it, I pulled it all back apart. This needs to go into a hole right there and it's on the bottom side. So I need to pick this up. Just enough to get it past. The studs, rotate it 180, and put it back down. Now our hole's on top. A new ferrule and a nut. Look, it's long enough that I didn't have to make a new piece. All right, that's good and sturdy. Just wanna crank this over and make sure we got a little bit of gap. They're not gonna be perfect because we pulled it all apart. Put it back together, but I just don't want anything sitting tight when I try to uh, start it up. Uh, I don't remember if I checked that one. All right, we got a gap on everything. So, uh, I say the, the engine's been flushed. I'm going to put a new filter on it, fill it back up with oil. need to make a gasket for the drain plug. There's a gasket.
Nice clean oil in there, sure looks good. Uh, compared to what we found yesterday. See if I can crank this thing over and get some oil pumping up through it. I can see it pumping up in here. So all this does is this tube pumps up and fills that rocker shaft and then that seeps out into the rocker arms. Get these spark plugs put back in it. I would like to know the story behind that crack right there. You know, is that like a, was it a casting flaw or what? Now I really believe we're to the point where this thing is ready to fire. We've got compression on all four cylinders now. We've got the plugs cleaned off. We got the gallon or so of antifreeze out of the oil. Uh, we're doing pretty good here. So we've got antifreeze in it. So if it starts up, we can let it run. I'm going to hook our ignition back up, turn our fuel back on, and let's give this thing a crank. Okay, cross your fingers, let's see if it fires up. A little bit of throttle, some choke, and the starter. On to try four or five or six or whatever we're on. Let's see what we've got. I really think it's some of this old gas that's mixed in here is our problem. Try a little easier. this old fuel is not getting atomized correctly maybe it's older than I thought it was um, it sure doesn't smell old start the fluid to the crank there we go idle quite that low. Can't ask for it to run much. 
better than that. Well, I've had it sitting here idling for 5, 15, 20 minutes now. And uh, looks like the temperature gauge works. Brought it up about 120. Aside from the uh, valve cover leaking, it doesn't look like the front or the rear main seal leak, which is amazing because either the oil pan or the front of the rear main crank seal on these like always leaks. Um, still holding good oil pressure. I uh, don't know anything about the charging system. Like I said, it was all unhooked. That thing runs good. So I'm gonna go ahead and unhook the battery from this thing and I'm gonna let it sit overnight and come back tomorrow and see what's dripped out of it or if those welch plugs are leaking or anything. And uh, if everything looks all right, we're gonna get it unloaded. Get it, get it actually put on the ground in the shop here instead of up on a trailer. I don't know, I just, I like, driving them off the trailer for some reason it's hard to work on the trailer but uh you know if you can drive them off it's kind of fun that way a little bit of a challenge but we will check back tomorrow well it's the next day i'm back here and uh i'm gonna pull that valve cover off and see if there's any seepage around those welch plugs and get this thing unloaded first take a look under here Yeah, everything looks good, which is awesome because I I was worried that we might have something that seeped, but it, it doesn't look like it at all. I actually happen to have a new valve cover gasket laying around, so I'll throw that on there. We can at least <laughs> eliminate some of the, uh, the mess while this thing's running.
option. It's a 73 and 83, and I believe this is a 53. I didn't really look at it. I'm assuming everything's seized up. Oh, well, the beaming screw's not. What about these? Yeah, the lift links are seized up. Put some oil on those, get that soaking. But this plow is in, in pretty darn nice shape. And uh, this should have been like the original plow that came with that tractor, or at least the right model. Uh, gotta get rid of one of these. Probably this 73 is gonna go away. Cause this is an, that 83 that I fixed up, got the trip bottoms on it and stuff and the new, new plow shares and shins are good. So that's a nice plow to work with. And uh, this one should be pretty nice too. Just wouldn't be quite as good in uh, like high trash situations. You got a little more height and a little more width, like forward and backward for trash. You kind of look at the throat on this one and the throat on one of these. You can clear a lot more trash in one of those plows. Yeah, same basic design, but just a little progression through the years. This would have been one of the first, if not the first, snap coupler plows, and that would have been the uh, the last model, that 83 there. A little progression. Well, she's been running for about a half hour now. Everything still sounds good. Doesn't look like that valve pumper gasket sealed up very good. We got a bit of a puddle on the ground. I believe that's where it's coming from. Sure looks like it. Pretty common for these to get warped. Might not have it just might not have it tight enough. You gotta be careful, they they do warp easily. Still doesn't want to idle, but I don't think I can complain about that. Unhook our ignition. So I'd like your opinion. What should I do with this thing? Um, it's in pretty good shape. I mean, it needs at least one new rear tire and tube and the rims fixed up. Uh, I mean that alone you're looking at over a thousand dollars for a tire and a tube Which is twice what I paid for the whole thing uh, That's kind of the fun of old equipment like this uh, But a little rundown it probably needs the radiator patched up um, It's gonna need a muffler This tire will need replaced this tube will need replaced uh, I'll have to patch this rim up here. Uh, it's pretty good shape unless the whole inside's rotted out. Uh, but that's not too bad. I can patch that up without much issue. Uh, it'll need a battery. Pretty much uh, need completely rewired. Um, they're pretty simple. So that's not too big a deal. I didn't even really try the brakes on this thing. Uh, they're out there quite a ways, but I'm guessing uh, there's plenty of adjustment left. It's really, it's really a pretty tight tractor. No real goodies in the toolbox. It's missing a wheel lock, and I was hoping that would be in there, but it's not. Has a mismatched set of lift latches. That's not really required to get it going good, but... Uh, I probably have one of those laying around to match this side or vice versa. This tire is pretty good. It does have some cracking on it. Um, I wouldn't be afraid to run it for years. I don't know if I could find a match. I'd love to find a match to that. Those are some of my favorite looking tires is the old Firestone Field and Roads. Um, and this one is really, it's, it's darn near new condition. I don't know how old it is. I don't see not seeing a date stamp. It's kind of a cheaper one. It's a four ply. Uh, I have to go through the carburetor, clean the carburetor. It's not a real big deal. Um, 
generator Does it have it seems tight so it'll probably be fine that'll probably work fine just have to rewire it uh, new intake boot front tires are cracked up uh, but I wouldn't be afraid to run them for a long time that one will need patched up this front plate needs uh, bent straight and flipped around and then probably build this boss back up and uh, machine it out Probably I need a water pump, new hoses, a uh, new battery box, uh, or at least fix this one up. Uh, the headlight lens on the other side's cracked. It'll need some work there. Uh, but overall, it's it's an excellent start uh, to like a restoration or just to, to fix one of these up to use it. Um, I think my preference on uh, this machine would be to fix it up and put it to work and take it to some equipment shows and plow days. Uh, I already have another one I've owned, I don't know, this is probably the 6th or 7th WD and WD45 I've owned. Um, so I'm not not new to them, had this junk for, for years, probably, well, 10, 12 years I've been doing this type of stuff, um, but it's too nice to part out in my opinion uh, it needs more money put in it than what it's worth but pretty much everything like this is uh, in that same category with uh, parts to repair cost more than the actual machine does um, but let me know what you think uh, should, uh, should I part it out should I fix it up should I just flip it get it out of here I don't know I'm not really sure kind of bought it on a whim and uh, help you let you guys help decide so let me know what you think and uh, if you like this type of stuff uh, go ahead subscribe to the channel uh, give the video a like and uh, there should be more videos like this to come like I said I've been doing this stuff for 10 12 years and I just recently started recording it so don't plan to stop anytime soon so there should be more of this to come uh, but appreciate you all watching and uh, I'll see you on the next one